how to choose a good vet, right? As a breeder, it's super imperative that you choose the right vet. What your vet doesn't know will actually cost you. Finding the right vet is humongous. It's, it's probably one of the biggest decisions other than like the dogs that you're using to breed when it comes to being a breeder. They can either make you or break you. So I just figured, hey, let's just cover, you know, what makes a good vet and how to find a good vet, you know? So let's stay tuned. What's going on, Bully Fam? What's going on, Bully Fam? It's your boy, the educator, the scientist, Mr. Double Muscle Line Bulls, bringing you another episode of Breeders Hacks. So currently we're on the road right now with my boy Wilson. So I figured, hey, you know what? A good topic that we could cover is like how to find or how to choose a good vet, right? Because as a breeder, this is probably one of the most important decisions you're gonna make. They can either make you or break you. They can either help you make decent money or ensure that you kind of go broke. When picking a vet, one of the biggest things is, yet again, my mentor Chris Moore talks about this. I mean, it, it's almost like you have to go and almost interview them. Like he said that one time he went to a vet, didn't bring any dogs, and he was like, I just wanna see where your head is at, if you are pro repro or not. And I agree with him. Like, there's been vets that I've gone to. I mean, I don't go to that degree where I show up with no dog and interviews a vet. But, uh, I mean, I, I, I actually, like, I agree with him, though, that I've brought dogs to vets for simple stuff that I already knew what the answer was and so on and so forth just to see if they were going to be honest with me, just to see how much they were going to charge me, if, they were, if, if I could form some kind of connection or relationship with them. And it's extremely important because, like I said, the vets that you have around you is either going to make you or break you. They're either going to help uplift you and save you money because they're not going to beat you over the head on pricing. They're going to take the time to educate you and tell you, hey, this is why we do this. This is why we do that, so on and so forth. And the one thing I can say is when you find a really good vet, they're worth their weight in gold. I can't stress that enough. They are worth their weight in gold. There's a vet in New Jersey. I'm willing to drive all the way to New Jersey, which is about two, two and a half hours, but he is the one of the best vets. I don't, I don't know what I'm gonna do when, when he stops practicing. And I mean, this vet, I'm talking about extremely honest with you. In my opinion, a good vet will be get, willing to give you their phone number. I think they'll be willing to give you either their phone number so you can contact them. Obviously, you don't abuse that. Don't give it away to everyone. Don't be calling them at two o'clock in the morning just because your dog stubs its toe or whatever the case may be. But if the vet is willing to give you their number, that is a huge one. And like I've had vets on the first day that I've met them say, you know, hey, I'm I'm willing to, you know, give you my number, you know, to establish some type of report. That's huge. You might not get the phone number right away. That's a big sign. If they give you their number, that's 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 really good. Another thing is pricing, right? So there's like online websites that you can go on and you can look at what is like the standard pricing for certain procedures and so on and so forth. And you can just simply ask them like, hey, what do you charge for a C-section? Or, or you could just call around, right? I've called around enough places and I've done enough C-sections now to know what I would be willing or want to pay for a quality C-section. So if they're over that number by a significant amount, say they're double, triple the amount, well, then that's going to kind of tell me, I don't know if I, you know, I don't know if I want to be dealing with this particular vet because they're going to be, the price is going to be extremely high every time I come. And that oftentimes has to play with their location. I find that the more comfortable vets that are, are with breeders are going to be the vets that are more in rural areas, more out, like out, outside of the city. You get more vets that are in the city, the, like even some of the suburbs, they have a high rent. So they're like kind of pressed. Remember, it's a business for them at the end of the day. It is a business. They're more pressed to make sure they meet their quotas and, you know, pay uh, their high rent. And, and a lot of, like I said, inner city vets in the suburbs, they're owned by chains. So they can't really like have the wiggle room like a rural vet who, you know, is in the country somewhere that set up their own practice, maybe even out of their home, whatever the case may be. Like those are the vets that usually are pretty good at looking out for you. Another thing. You want to see, where does this vet even stand? Back to what I was saying with Chris, right? Are they pro-repro? Are they not? You know, are they, you know, for breeding? Are they a breeder themselves? Some vets are a breeder. I know one vet that's out by me, she's a breeder. Some of them, you mentioned breeder and it's like, no, 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 no. You need to be able to also ask them, like, where, what is their stance? Are you for breeding, against breeding? 
And that's that's a huge flag right there because I'll give you an example. Is like I know people who have gone to vets that are so against breeding. When it came time to do their C-section, the vet actually told them, yeah, I could do the C-section, but I'm going to spay the dog afterwards. That's a tough situation. I certainly wouldn't be caught in that situation. That's why I do my due diligence and find good vets first. So to a degree, like I said, you kind of want to interview the vet, you know? You want to see where they stand on reproduction, where they stand on breeders. Are they willing to give you direct contact with them? You know, because you're not any, you're not just some customer that's coming in with one dog. You're more than likely going to be bringing multitudes of dogs to them. And not only that, you're going to be having puppies and you're going to be sending your puppies most likely to that vet. So, you know, you want to see that they want your business to a degree. Another thing is a vet's going to be willing to, you know, share with you more information than just saying the dog has a pyometra. We have to give her antibiotics to treat it. It's going to cost you $3,000, whatever, you know, you really want them to be open with you and tell you, hey, what's going on with the dog? Like another thing, actually, this is another thing to it. You would want that the vet, what tells me a lot as well, is the vet willing for you to go back and see when they're doing like say procedures and things like that you know say they're doing a c-section on your dog if they're willing to let you in and see the c-section going on that would make me feel a lot more comfortable some of them will come up with excuses as to why you can't go in the back hey it's the vet's practice they can do they make the rules it's whatever they want they if they want to let you in the back they will let you in the back some vet's offices even have a window that allow you to see the procedure as it's being done or someone just like i said let you in the back so if the vet doesn't let you in the back room, that would kind of be a little bit of a red flag for me as well. There's some vets who, who don't let you do that. Or like, for example, there was a vet, they claim they offer a lot of these service, certain services, but no one that I know has ever seen them perform a transcervical insemination. So how do I know that you're not just taking my dog, bringing it to the back and performing a regular artificial insemination that the average person could just do at home? Those are all things that you want to think of. Is like I said, the transparency. I guess that's the best way to word it. The transparency. Is the vet being transparent with you? Are they allowing you to see really what's going on? You know, and I think that's kind of big for me. It's a great experience when the vet says, "Hey, come to the back, come help wake up some of these puppies." It, it also helps give you experience. You know, your vet should only help your program. It shouldn't be a stressor to go there and say, "Oh God." What am I going to be paying now or whatever the case may be, you know, um, then like I said, you may have to go through multitudes of vets. You may have to go through the, the many different vets. But those are just some of the key things that I look for when I'm interviewing for a new vet. You know, is there transparency? Will they give me their direct contact thing? Will they take me in if I have an emergency? You know, will they take me in on a holiday? Do they let me come to the back and see the procedures being done? Stuff like that. All kinds of stuff like that. One of the last things I can say is also you can just kind of go off of the vibe that you get from the vet as well. You know, um, do they feel like they're being honest with you? Do you feel comfortable with them? Do you feel uh, that there is complete transparency? That's, that's going to be a big one off of your gut feeling as well. You know, but I just wanted to give you some things that you could think about and consider when you are going to interview, interview your vet, but ask them where they stand on things. Ask them, do they let you, you know, see when procedures are going on? Ask them, how do they feel about reproduction, breeding, things like that? You know, ask them for a price on a C-section and compared to the other C-sections all in the area and stuff like that. That's going to really kind of tell you where you stand with that vet, you know? So anyway, just figured I'd share that with you guys. We're on the road, so we're going to shoot a few different episodes and stuff. But I mean, like I said, that, that is big. And like I said, when you find a good vet, you treat them good. Holidays, send them cards, send them all kinds of stuff. You know, treat them like family, and they're going to take care of you. So anyway, guys, hope this information is helpful. hope it's useful. I'll see you guys on the next episode of Breeders Hacks. And don't forget, drop a comment down below and let me know your experiences with your vet. What are some things that are red flags to you that make you say, okay, maybe this is a good vet? Or maybe what are some things that make you say you have a good vet? I don't know. Drop a comment down below and let me know. All right, guys.